So now we're going to talk about neurons being able to communicate together. We've already talked about a neuron being able to fire by itself, but what happens after that? So before we get in there, and just as a quick review, remember if we have our neuron here, it's normally positive on the outside and negative on the inside. That's at rest. Well then, after rest, we have some stimulus, and our stimulus reaches its threshold potential. So when that happens, sodium channels open, and sodium goes in. So now we're positive on the inside and negative on the outside. That's the depolarization. Then, right behind that, remember that the potassium channel will open and potassium will go out. Repolarizing, so now we're positive on the outside and negative on the inside. And then, that's, sorry, that's the repolarization stage. And then now we have to reset everything, so that's where our sodium potassium pump kicks sodium back out and potassium back in, all the while making sure it stays negative on the inside and positive on the outside. Okay, so that's our big picture. So now, let's, for a moment, go back here. Start at the beginning, where we're positive on the inside and, or sorry, positive on the outside of the cell and negative on the inside of the cell. So we got to be able to interpret graphs here. So here's a graph of an action potential, okay? Starts off as negative millivolts, negative 70 millivolts. We say it's negative because it's in respect to the inside of the cell. So the cell's at rest, the cell's at rest, the cell's at rest until we have a stimulus to reach the threshold potential, at which time sodium goes in. As sodium goes in, remember the inside of the cell is becoming more positive, just like we see on this graph. Sodium in, sodium in, sodium in, sodium in. Until what happens? Well, until we have the potassium channels open and potassium go out. Okay, then it's becoming negative on the inside and positive on the outside again. So the inside of the cell is becoming more negative, more negative, more negative, more negative, more negative, more negative. But we can't get too negative. Remember, we need the action of the sodium-potassium pump that uses ATP to reset up our dominoes or reset the neuron. Being able to create, describe, and know everything about this graph is going to be very, very, very important for your knowledge. The axon is coated with something called myelin. Myelin is a fatty substance that does two things. One, it insulates the axon, and two, it speeds the signal. So again, here's the dendrites, here's the cell body, and here's the axon, and this axon has myelin, this fatty substance. It insulates the axon, which is very, very, very important. In anything to do with electric electronics, you don't want two wires to be able to touch, okay? That causes a short circuit, causes a spark. We don't want the spark to happen, okay? Same thing happens if two axons were to, were to touch. That would create a false signal or a false communication. We don't want false signals. We don't want false communications. We need what it needs to do. The second thing that it does is we said that it speeds the signal. Now, what we mean by that when it speeds the signal is this conduction of sodium ions flowing in is actually able to jump over the myelin sheath and start the action potential in this portion of the axon here. Again, that's what happens. We don't need to know a heck of a lot about it. Okay. Um, immune system, uh, with the T cells attack the myelin sheath uh, and it causes a loss of signal. That's what happens when you have MS. MS attacks the myelin sheath, 
okay? And it loses that signal or causes a lot of false communications because there's so many false communications. It's almost like, eh, we don't recognize that threshold potential anymore and we're not gonna communicate. So again, remember, we have a signal that starts here with the dendrite, moves to the cell body and down the axon. So this is just one neuron. So what happens at the next neuron? How do we communicate between? Well, as you see here and here, okay, those two sequences of dominoes don't touch. And these neurons don't touch. And it's true. Again, because we want to prevent false signals. But we have to get messages across that space. And that space is called the synapse the synapse, the space between neurons is called a synapse. Somehow we have to get the message going from the dendrite cell body down the axon. This message is just hanging out here, but somehow I needed to get it to the dendrites of the next cell so this next neuron can fire as well. So, events that happen at the synapse. The action potential comes down the axon, down the axon. Remember those waves that we were talking about last time? What that does is that causes a release of a neurotransmitter. A neurotransmitter is a chemical of different types, and there's specific neurotransmitters for specific messages. But the neurotransmitter is going to go across the synapse and it's going to bind to one of these receptor proteins. When the neurotransmitter binds to the dendrite, uh, receptor protein on the dendrite of the next neuron, that causes the sodium channel of the next neuron to open. Now the next neuron has an action potential. The neurotransmitter, whatever that was, has to get broken down or reabsorbed. It's got to go back into the first axon. The reason that it has to be broken down or reabsorbed is because, well, it bound here, so then it can bind there, cause another action potential, bind there, cause another action potential, bind to this one again, again creating false signals that are bad. We don't like them. So, recap. Action potential moves down, releases neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter goes across the synapse, binds to the receptor protein on the dendrite of the next neuron. That binding of the neurotransmitter on the next neuron causes an action potential in the next neuron, meaning the next neuron fires, so on and so forth. So once we get to the end of the axon, we switch from an electrical signal to a chemical signal, that's the neurotransmitter, and then as soon as it binds here, the neuron fires again, we go back to an electrical signal. So as soon as the neurotransmitter binds, Right here, right here, it binds. So here we have acetylcholine and neurotransmitter. It binds. Sodium goes in, causing the firing to happen. And so sodium comes in, causing the next sodium channel to open, sodium in, next sodium channel open, sodium to come in. And behind it, we'd have the potassium channel open, potassium goes out, those two waves move down the axon, it fires again, just like the first one. Neurotransmitters, there's a billion kajillion, okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. Neurotransmitters, we got to know about three. The first one, acetylcholine. Very, 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 very important. Uh, it deals with skeletal muscle. What that means is when you're writing notes, you're moving your pen, you're moving muscles, acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter that's doing that communication. We've talked about epinephrine or adrenaline, same thing, potato, potato, quite a bit, dealing with the fight or flight responses. And then the other one is dopamine. It happens in your brain and it deals with sleep, mood, attention, and hello. Has to do with a little bit of learning. That's usually a good thing. So we'll talk about neurotransmitters a little bit more. It's really the weak point of the nervous system. And we say that it's for two reasons. One, 
Let's get a different color here. Uh, the first reason is that it's very slow. Electricity happens much more quickly than a chemical can travel across the synapse. Don't get me wrong, it still happens really fast, but it's slower than the electricity. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is that it can easily be mimicked or, so sorry, mimicked or just in general messed with. What I mean by that is we can mimic it by having a different chemical that acts like a neurotransmitter, okay? Or we can have a chemical that messes with the neurotransmitter by binding to it and creating it to be something different, okay? Uh, some of these things could be gases like nitrous oxide that causes ridiculousness uh, aggressive behavior, carbon monoxide, which is highly toxic that can poison you, um, mood-altering drugs such as stimulants to make you go, 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 go forever, uh, things like amphetamines, caffeine, nicotine, those are all stimulants, or depressants, things like marijuana, things to slow everything down and block. Basically, stimulants are things that mimic, um, mimic neurotransmitters, usually, uh, to cause a reaction to happen. That shouldn't, okay? It's a false signal. Depressants are things that block communication from happening, okay? So no communication can happen. There's also other things like hallucinogenic drugs giving false signals and poisons, and but we'll talk about that next. The biggest thing that I want you to walk away from here is stimulants cause things to happen that should not happen. Depressants, oops, depressants, okay, they block communication from happening. So let's talk about this last one, what poisons do, right? We've all heard of a poisonous snake before. It doesn't sound very fun. So we're gonna say, now don't get me too confused here, Flanagan. We have a C -tool choline and acetylcholinesterase, okay? Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter. Acetylcholinesterase is the enzyme, okay? Remember, if we go back a few slides, we remember that we said that acetylcholinester, sorry, enzymes, neurotransmitters, have to be broken down or reabsorbed in order to prevent false signals. Well, acetylcholinesterase is the enzyme that breaks down the neurotransmitter acetylcholine after it's done its job. Okay, you with me so far? So, here is a normal acetylcholinesterase molecule. Okay, so our muscles are working, we're walking through the woods or we're walking wherever it is that we're walking. And then all of a sudden we see this guy right here. Okay, and we think, oh look, cool, a snake. Let's go touch it because it looks cool and it's a snake and why not because snakes are cool. So our muscles are working, which means our acetylcholinesterase is working, right? We're not prevent or we're preventing false signals from happening. This guy's working. Acetylcholine is going across the synapses and acetylcholinesterase is breaking everything down. So our muscles can continue to move. Well, then we go walk over to that snake and we try to pet the snake and the snake is really irritated at us and it comes out and it bites us on the arm. So when it bites us on the arm, okay, that snake venom has some different enzymes in it and it, some other things in it. The poisons or the toxins in this case is going to block the enzyme from doing its job. So if the enzyme is blocked from doing its job, the enzyme can't work which means we have tons and tons of acetylcholine sitting there actively engaging those protein receptors to cause neurons to fire and then you kind of go into a convulsion. Well, you can't control your muscles when you're convulsing. I know that sounds kind of harsh for us, but in our situation for a human, the snake would probably realize, wow, I can't swallow a human, I'm gonna slither away while you're convulsing. Again, win for the snake. Think of it in terms of food. Snake swallows a rat or a mouse. OK, 
okay? Again, the mouse is convulsing this time over its whole body. It can't move or anything, so now the snake can eat its prey. Again, advantage snake. All because it took advantage of the weak point of our system, the neurotransmitters. So remember, communication, there's a space between the neurons. The neurons, that space is called the synapse. Neurotransmitters go across the synapse. That's how we communicate. Those neurotransmitters need to be broken down or reabsorbed so we don't prevent or sorry, it's so we can prevent false signals. There's lots of different things that can cause false signals. That's why we have the myelin sheath for insulation to protect. Um, and we have things like enzymes to break everything down. And that is all she wrote on neuron to neuron communication. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.